Join us for this week's On the Conservation Front as we dive deeper into critical water issues facing the state. Florida Sportsman has been leading the fight on the conservation front lines for over 50 years. In the last few years, the Northern Indian River Lagoon has been racked by seagrass die-offs and massive fish kills. These critical water quality problems need further study and solutions. Conservation projects like Bonefish and Tarpon Trust's Bee Gum Project are part of those solutions. Florida's already lost around 9 million acres of its wetlands, which includes mangroves and salt marsh. Uh, and to the extent that those habitats are critical to juvenile snook and tarpon, that means that even if we stopped all harvest of those species, um, their populations are never going to be as big as they were before we lost the mangrove. The Bee Gum Preserve is uh, owned by a private organization called the Indian River Land Trust. And this is a group of people from Indian River County who have all chipped in their funds to basically purchase, conserve, and manage endangered habitats throughout uh, the county. And uh, they first started talking with Aaron as a way to identify its value as a nursery habitat, and that gave me a chance to come in and help them do this project. That's one of the great opportunities that we have here by working with the land trust. If we can collaborate with the scientists, the land trusts, and there are many around the state, to find habitats like bee gum, uh, mosquito impoundment, and reverse what has happened to it to an extent that it's a good fish nursery, then that increases the value of the conservation that the Land Trust is trying to achieve. We're standing on top of a culvert connecting the Indian River Lagoon to Bee Gum, and these culverts are now opened up in the winter time when mosquitoes are not breeding, allowing fish to go back and forth. Summertime, they close off the culverts, pump them full of water, and mosquitoes can't breed. Sounds great. They call it a rotational management plan. And our concern is, does this work for getting baby snook and baby tarpon out into the lagoon? Two projects in southwest Florida were very revealing. Uh, the first one with snook, we tagged uh, thousands of snook and watched their migrations in and out of creeks. And that's when we determined that the juvenile snook, after a year or two years, finally left those backcountry creeks in the summer, the spring and the summer, very important. We also found that in degraded areas like this impoundment or similar ones in the west coast of Florida, that the growth rate of snook and tarpon was extremely slow, which meant that when they finally did leave the impoundments, uh, they were too small and their chance of getting eaten was very high. So you put those two together uh, and the degraded habitats are uh, basically what we would call a sink uh, for, for juvenile fish. They're disappearing down the drain rather than contributing to the population. So we took the research that we'd done in Charlotte Harbor on both tarpon and snook. We knew what natural systems were supposed to look like. And so we worked with the Indian River Land Trust, the Indian River County Mosquito Control District uh, on bee gum to figure out how we could change how the water's managed here in order to make it uh, hopefully a better nursery habitat. So the basic idea was pretty simple. Tag a bunch of fish, figure out where they're going, when they're going. So we're using these little pit tags, passive integrated transponder. These are the same type of a tag that the veterinarian will put in your dog or your cat to help you identify that animal should the need occur. It's a tremendous technique for tracking individual animals, but it's not been used very much in salt water. Aaron and his group are the ones who determine how to adapt this to salt water. Right, so essentially what happens is this tag is a computer chip in glass. Um, it doesn't have a battery, so it basically lasts forever. So when we put this into a fish, when that fish swims through a powered antenna, that antenna is essentially sending an electrical signal through the water. That powers the chip, which then sends back its ID code. So this is the same technology that you see in the automatic toll booth system. Uh, if we have a narrow constriction area like a culvert or a creek mouth, we can stretch these antenna, say even 30 feet across the creek mouth, and pick up all the snook or any other tagged fish that swim through it. We were able to use information from research on snook and tarpon in Charlotte Harbor to understand how they use natural habitats. And that research showed us that during the summer, those juvenile snook and tarpon, after a year or two, would leave the natural habitats. So now we brought that information over to bee gum, an impoundment that is managed so that it's closed off from the estuary during the summer and opened it to the estuary during the winter. What we found is that the fish would not go back and forth through the culverts from the impoundment to the estuary in the winter, just like they don't in their natural habitat. 
but that the culverts were closed during the summer. So what we did is worked with Indian River County Mosquito Control District to open the culverts during the summer for about a week period. When we did that, a lot of the snook and tarpon emigrated. They did what they were supposed to do. And then after a couple weeks, the culverts were closed again. They pumped it back up, got rid of the mosquitoes, and everyone was happy. So now the plan is to take that and to start expanding it to other impoundments and figure out how we can best manage these altered habitats so that once again, they're productive nursery habitats for juvenile snook, tarpon, and other species that have huge economic value to the state of Florida. Another one of our big picture goals with this is to work with the state of Florida to incorporate habitat into fisheries management. Right now, that's not the case. Department of Environmental Protection manages habitat and Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission manages the fisheries. We all know that fish depend upon healthy habitats. If we can work with the state of Florida to start increasing the value of habitats like bee gum and other impoundments to make them more valuable, that's going to help them manage the fisheries. So big picture again here is to start working with the state, the counties, and everyone else to turn habitat back into the center of focus for fisheries habitat management. You know, what can Floridians and other people who may visit or fish in Florida do to support these projects and help these projects? One of the best things that people can do to help Bonefish Tarpon Trust identify and characterize habitats is tell us about where they find juvenile snook and tarpon. This is a good way for fishermen to take part in habitat conservation, uh, to let us know where it is, um, when you caught the fish, those types of things. Just go to btt.org and you can contact us. Um, and then we'll get working to expand our habitat map and then turn that information around uh, to work with the state and counties to start protecting and restoring more habitats. We're all part of the problems in some ways by coming in and living here, which means we all have a moral responsibility, at least somewhat of a responsibility, to get involved to try to help clean up the environment. And there's dozens of different environmental control projects going on. Get involved. Anything people can do to get involved is a plus.